Most parents will agree, the few months after a baby is born bring about a sea of different emotions. Each person has a different mix of these emotions and to different degrees, but there's usually some amount of tremendous joy, nervousness, euphoria, excitement and fear. On today's episode, we're going to explore this very early phase of parenting. On the show today, a powwow with some wonderful new mums on what they are going through and various myths and superstitions. A chat with actor Imran Khan's wife Avantika Malik Khan on being a mum and her mum Vandana Malik on being a grandma. A look at our story when I was pregnant with Zen and Kai and what they were like as newborns and how we felt. And then a candid chat with Mandira Bedi on her experiences as a new mum where she opens up about what she went through with postpartum depression. One of the reasons I started this show is because when I was pregnant and soon after our kids were born I found no one gets more advice than a pregnant woman and a new mom. And while some of this advice is useful, some of it is questionable to say the least. So I thought why not chat to some new moms about some of these myths and superstitions and the science behind them. Tell me Lalita, what does motherhood mean to you? Motherhood is sort of a whirlpool of emotions, drama, where at one point you're just probably doing a song and dance, you're being a ventriloquist. So you're different things at different times and you're also, I think most importantly, a listener. You have to listen to something that they say, even if they say it 49 times, <laughs> over and over and over. But it's all wonderful, right? As a mom, it's all wonderful. Yes, that's the right thing to say, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nandini, how did you feel when you first held Arjun in your hands? Um, I think it's a moment no mother ever forgets. Uh, it's very special. Uh, it's also a moment of dread and anxiety because you realize now there's great responsibility. And Kenaz, was there anything you did to prepare uh, when you were pregnant for the for the little one's arrival? Well, actually, I did a lot. Everything by the book, I would say. We went through this parenting course, my husband and myself. So we learned a lot from there, and that actually helped us deal with a lot of things that we heard, like your myths, as they call it. Uh, it helped us deal with that because we knew what the right way to go and how we wanted to bring up uh, our son. Right. So that helped us prepare for the future. Wow, um, so you, you prepared. So you. I literally prepared myself, you know, and had a very smooth pregnancy, I would say. But nothing prepares you for what comes next. Did you prepare much? Did you do any research and stuff before? I did read because I always think it's, it's always good to have the information. Then how you wish to use it, there's a lots of flexibility. Right. So I think it's, it's a question of also learning from generations. So that's always the greater source for me. Yeah. And so as, as challenging as myths and superstitions are in our day and age, there also comes interesting common sense lessons from them. And, you know, for example, if Arjun's not eating and for a long time, he just, he's a terrible eater. And one day, you know, my maid's like, just take off the nazar from him. And sure enough, the next moment, our friend was sitting on the table and gobbling up his food. So I don't know, you know, and she said, you know, all the water that you put out all just got absorbed. So there was so much nazar. So I said, great. Well, now we can but move on see, swiftly. See, see, now these are, this is very interesting. It brings us to myths and superstitions and what one should believe, what one shouldn't. But how many of these myths and superstitions do you think are rooted in science? You know, there's um, all kinds of things which come your way. And I think ultimately what you pick and choose is either what suits you or what you can manage. Like, for example, in the beginning when you, when you find out you're pregnant and, you know, it's that eureka moment and when you're waiting to tell your partner about it and you're like, yay, we made a baby or, you know, whatever. And um, it's, it's almost something that you want to shout out from the rooftop, you know, at least the first time. And uh, then there's this whole thing, the myth or whatever, is that don't speak about it for the first three months. But and I don't know, uh, is that a myth? Because I think that's a biological reason, no, isn't it? it, it that see, you... that is a myth which, is, which has its foundation in science. The most uh, miscarriages and, uh, you know, happen things that go wrong can happen in the God first forbid, three months. Yeah. So unless you're absolutely sure... Uh, don't talk about it. But it, it started off as a myth, but because it has a foundation in science, you're more likely to sort of follow it. But then I think in future, 
there are many other things that keep happening like uh, uh, as you grow bigger in your pregnancy uh, people start judging you uh, the sex of the child by the size of your backside and you know they'll say turn around and you know and the shape of the belly determines <laughs> yes. what, what gender you're what having gender, so. yeah I remember one instance like in the initial months when you're sort of homebound with the child and um, you can't help taking photos and uh, especially when the baby is sleeping <laughs> because that's one moment when they look like really ethereal and blissed out and you're, you're like, oh my God. You're not supposed to take pictures of a and sleeping yes, baby. I keep saying, look at the and he's like, I don't believe in no, all this. No, and I have so, so many pictures yeah. of Ray as a sleeping baby. Yeah. And yeah. Why he looks so cute as a sleeping baby <laughs> with just the cheeks coming out and I would post it and then there would be likes and this and that and my mother would say, don't take pictures of a sleeping baby because it's not good for the baby. It's nazar and this and that. And then when four people tell you, when your mother tells you, you're like, oh my God, that's your your mother she's going to tell you that when but then some other friend tells you and you're like oh oh you know suddenly you're in conflict whether to believe that or not believe that but you sort of tend to give it the benefit of doubt and say okay fine yeah. let me not do it let me not take a picture of yeah, this whether you baby. believe it or not you kind of say why tempt yeah. fate exactly why kind of exactly. step on so something if i'm not sure that's what myths tend to do they tend mm -hmm. to sort of work on your psyche more than your rational i think you have to find that balance between moving ahead being realistic and not doing anything that's of course over the top there is yeah. this deep it's, down instinct inside you which just tells you what to do especially if you have nobody around you there is some answer that comes up and you just know it is yeah. essentially right and i think that's your greatest strength but of course there's a balance you know and it will always be a precarious one because you're trying to please as many people as you can yes and when everything fails rely on common sense i think yeah. because that Absolutely. takes you the longest way but i think that moment your child is born um the bond you share with your child what works for your child may not work for someone else so that bond itself helps you uh, overcome all the other things that people may say or people may tell you to do just one last thing there's a tendency to just go on about the euphoria and how amazing but i've also met several mothers who've actually told me that they've had a very tough time so is there anything you'd like to share on that or any any one thing have? i had um which i wish people would talk about more when i had my first son I had a lot of problems feeding and I had huge abscess and so I could not feed. And so uh, I went through several surgeries before that and so many women come to me and said, "Oh, even I had these feeding problems, even I had abscess and you know, and I don't think that's talked about enough." So I think uh feeding has a lot of problems that come with it and now today there are great lactation consultants that do yeah. help. Yeah. I also so I think, think this whole there's a lot of martyrdom associated yes. with pregnancy and motherhood yes. and this whole um need or you know uh, built in need to to always put the baby first but i think it's as much about you as it is about the child yeah. and you have to also look into what what your body is going through and how much you need to help yourself recover physically emotionally um you know as much as you are giving care to your baby so i think women need to talk to each other more we we tend to only share the happy stories but when there is like when you touch the tip of the iceberg about some uh, gory uh, details about whether it's post postpartum depression or breastfeeding related issues or um just getting your libido back i mean you know uh, these things are sort of always swept under the carpet and they are not discussed enough so i think we should just be a little more honest and have When these open when did you get your libido back <laughs> <laughs> not that you mentioned it took a very long time <laughs> i think on that note it's really been so lovely hearing all your views and thank you so 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 much for being here thank you for having us coming up a chat with avantika malik khan and her mom vandana malik a peek into my story when i was pregnant and a chat with mandira bedi on her first few months of being a mom i would cry for no reason really? i would just keep crying saying this is not what i signed up for i met a wonderful new mom avantika malik khan who was very honest about her experiences as mom to gorgeous little imara we were also joined by her mom vandana malik on the importance of being a grandma so havantika how does it feel being a mom i don't think there are enough adjectives to describe what it is but i'll start with overwhelming yeah <laughs> beautiful amazing exhausting you know all of it it's every experience all in one it's hard to describe actually absolutely and when you discovered you were pregnant was it something that um, you and imran 
were all planned about or was it a surprise no, or how did you feel? No, it wasn't planned at all actually. I mean, we had been, it was on our mind. It yeah. wasn't like, you know, that we hadn't talked about it. But uh, no, it was completely unplanned. So we both were, of course, in shock, kind of catatonic, couldn't speak for a few hours. <laughs> Uh, but then we decided we'd been together really very long and uh, we'd also been married for a while now. So it, it seemed like the organic, natural next step, you know. Yeah. The first three months of my pregnancy were difficult because I had dengue. Oh gosh. So literally the first trimester I was just like vomiting oh, no. the entire time. Being miserable, saying, oh my god, I don't know if I can do this. Oh no. Uh, but then yeah, I kind of settled down and you know. Yeah, and yeah. then of course it was all... Amazing, amazing. But of course. I, I think as you said, the at the end again, you had a toughish time yeah, just be before. Yeah, because you know, I'm really, really tiny and my tummy was huge and my back and you know, I mean, pregnancy is difficult. Any pregnant woman would know that. Yeah, yeah. So by the end of it, you're just like, okay, I'm ready. It's time for this baby to come out now. <laughs> so, so has your mummy been a big support? Oh, yes, absolutely. I tried for about a week, I came back home to my own home and I called her up one day and said, I'm coming to your house, I can't do this. <laughs> so, of course, then I scurried over onto her house and I was there for a couple of months. And even now, I mean, there is no words to again describe the kind of support that your own oh, mother is once you have a baby. And she's super granny, we all call her super granny. Uh -huh. So, being a grandmom, how different is it and how did you feel when you found out Avantika was pregnant? Well, initially, it was a bit that um, she's going to deliver around the time of my holiday. <laughs> now, is that a good thing <laughs> or not? <laughs> actually, what really changed was when the baby arrived, was when it actually became real. Yeah. It is just so much love, so much unconditional everything. I mean, I can cancel any holiday, I can cancel any party, anything. Mm -hmm. To have to babysit her <laughs> yeah. at all. And also, you don't really have the trappings of being a parent. Yeah, that's you know? what so I think my so parents and yeah, my in-laws always say. Is, is enjoy them so and then... Just, so, so that really is, I think, the biggest advantage of being a grandparent. And what about uh, Imran? Is he supportive? Does he help very as much. well? He's good, extremely supportive. Has very clear ideas of what he thinks are good for the baby and not good for the baby. Mm -hmm. And then those have to be followed. Yeah. So is there anything you'd like to say to other mums? Treat your baby as a, as a human being. Understand the baby's likes, dislikes. And just, just go with that. Don't get yourself so worked up and so strung up that you don't enjoy your baby. So just go with the flow. That's lovely. And Avantika, anything you'd like well, to say? Well, I want to say too, just like absolutely new mothers, you know, the ones that are in the first three months uh, and I've, I know are probably having a hard time yeah. because it's very overwhelming, especially first time mothers. And uh, suddenly you have to look after a baby that cannot communicate with you the way you're used to communicating with the world. So just hang in there. Yeah. It gets better. It gets so much easier so quickly. And once you hit that stride, it's just, Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you, thank you, Thanks, both you Sarah, super mummies. Sure. Thank, thank you. Really a pleasure. It's really interesting to know that Imran is a big believer in the science behind baby care. And to be honest, it's something I often ponder too. I was lucky to have pretty smooth, happy, healthy pregnancies and deliveries. And to be honest, I quite enjoyed the whole process. Of course, there was some pain at delivery, but I was lucky to have both normal deliveries with an epidural to help with the pain. But I can honestly say, the moment we held our little babies, both Rupak and I had tears of joy in our eyes. It was honestly the most incredible, overwhelming, amazing moment for both of us. I don't mean to sound over-optimistic, but I think the overriding emotion was tremendous joy at becoming parents. Of course, there were some moments in the first few months when I was unsure, but I decided quite early on to follow the advice of my doctor, my mom, and my husband, and sometimes my own body. It's not that I didn't listen to anyone else. It's just that I felt if I asked too many people, I might get confused because obviously everyone has their own way and everyone's way is right for them. I was lucky with the infrastructure of support I had with my parents living nearby. But to be honest, in the beginning, I didn't work much for that first year. So I dedicated myself wholly and solely to bringing up the baby. Sometimes I think I was a little over-obsessed, as new mums can often be.
In fact, for the first few months, I didn't even let any help pick up the baby. But I think I've always been quite a nerd and routine oriented. So I think apart from the tremendous joy that the baby brought, the baby also brought purpose and routine in my life, which I think I was somewhere missing in my freelance acting career. So I really enjoyed creating a routine that worked for the baby and for us all. I wasn't over strict with the routine, but I did try and stick to it as much as possible. But I think we quite enjoyed having a routine in place. And there were certain regimes like bath time that we really enjoyed as a family. And Rupak with his very busy work schedule would always make it a point to get back for that. One of the best things about this is the, the bath stand which I found super useful because I don't have to bend, I don't have to hurt my back. <laughs> Once Kai was born, the two of them enjoyed splashing about together. Since we don't have a big tub at home, sometimes we pulled out the paddle pool so that they could splash about in that. When I started doing a little research on bath time, I was really intrigued to find that the experts at Johnson & Johnson have done extensive research on the science behind bath time. I found that it can be so much more than just a quality bonding experience. Through experts, I learned that when the kids splashed water, they were actually developing their motor skills and their curiosity was being nurtured. While I was seeing bubbles, they were learning different colours. I realised that bath time stimulates a baby's mind and helps in his overall development. All this just reinforced that there is so much science behind baby care. I'm quite an optimist and perhaps I've conveniently forgotten the tough parts. That's not to say that there weren't any, but I think at some level it's important to remember the positive so that you stay positive even if, God forbid, things get tough. I have to admit, the second time round, when our younger son was born, things were quite different. Of course, the love and joy and incredible feeling were just as intense. But I think as parents, we were more relaxed and more chilled out. First 25 days, I cried a lot. Really? I went through a lot of postpartum depression. It was not easy. Everyone's situation is different. And so, everyone's experiences are often different. I had a chat with the lovely Mandira Bedi on what she went through when she was pregnant and the first few months after her gorgeous little son was born. Now I'm going to ask the cliched, cliched question that I think all us mums get asked. I out. love those questions. Okay, good. Fire so, away. <laughs> so here it goes. How has motherhood changed you and what does it mean to you? You know, when people ask me, um, what, what is your greatest achievement? What is the best thing you've done in your life? I don't look at whatever I've done in my professional life. I look back uh, at actually becoming a mom and I think that is that is honestly the most satisfying, gratifying, most wonderful experience. And I think um, becoming a mom has changed me in a lot of ways. Um, I had a short fuse. I lacked patience. But I think these are the things that you mellow as yeah. a, uh, when you become a parent. Mellow in a good way. I mean, I've learned patience. And I think I've, I've become a better person as a mother. So that actual moment when you first held the... Do you remember what you felt and what okay, you were Okay, like I'm going to be very, very you? honest. Okay, so I had a C-section and, you know, people talk of that moment when the baby comes to your arms. I looked at him and said, this is a little rat. <laughs> he's, he's not cute. And, uh, and you know, I, I actually suffered a lot of, uh, not a lot, but uh, a month of postpartum depression. Oh, really? I did, yes. So what, what did you, like, what happened? So, no, to begin you? with, when the baby came um, into my arms, I was like, okay. I didn't feel that instant bond. I didn't. A lot of mothers feel it and in my case that wasn't so. And honestly, I had so much post-delivery discomfort and pain mm -hmm. because I'm allergic to a lot of uh, painkillers. So whatever I didn't feel in contractions, yeah. I felt in the post-delivery, your body goes into contractions and afterwards, after, yeah, right? Yeah. So I felt all that pain and I was just, I just lay there for maybe two days and I couldn't hold him, I couldn't bond with him because I couldn't sit up. Really? So I, I didn't feel any of that love to begin with. And um, honestly, um, because it's life-changing, 
some people say, oh my God, my life is changed. Look at this beautiful bundle of joy. No, that wasn't the case with really? me. I was like, this is what I'm going to be having to look after. It's, you know, a lot of responsibility. This is not what I signed up for. I went through all of that. Really, really. Uh, and you know, all these beautiful notions you have about breastfeeding. Because of my C-section, I, I couldn't breastfeed immediately. I went through a lot. And that, that first month, uh, not 40 days, maybe first 25 days, I cried a lot. Really? I went through a lot of postpartum depression. It was not easy. Really? I would just keep crying and saying, this is not what I signed up for. And I, and I keep saying that to Raj. And Raj says, okay, it's all right. It's all right. You know, we'll, we'll get through this. And and both him and I had read up on postpartum depression. Some, and some part of me was probably saying, you know, this is what I'm going through. So one part of me would actually watch this from the outside saying, you know what? this probably will pass and this yeah. is not normal and I should not be crying but sometimes I would just just cry and keep crying and for no reason and I just felt that this is a life-changing experience this is the end of my independence and my life is never going to go back to what it was but I think I fell in love with my son maybe in the 15th 18th 19th day somewhere really yeah. that's fascinating to hear but um, is there anything you'd like to say to mums out there? there are lots of notions that you you know you have while you're pregnant about the way things will be the way things should be and the only thing I'll say is that they may not be the way you thought they'd be each person has a different kind of pregnancy each person has um, uh, you know a different uh, phase post-pregnancy and, and different feelings and different um, experiences yeah. and whatever they are, they're okay. Absolutely. They're yours and Absolutely. you know, everyone and that's your journey. I, I completely, completely agree. And on that note, thank you so, so, so My much pleasure. Mandira. Thank you. As with everything, everyone's experiences in those first few months varies and then you start focusing on the next phase. So from diapers, you're soon thinking about school admissions and then soon you're thinking about exams. So because everything moves so fast and honestly as parents I feel we live in the moment. My advice, if any, would be enjoy every moment. When the going is good, love it. And if the going is tough sometimes, follow Avantika's advice and hang in there. Next week, a chat with the legendary Australian cricketer Matthew Hayden on health and fitness. How Rupak and I encourage our kids to exercise and eat healthy. And a tete-a-tete -a -tete with the svelte Shilpa Shetty Kundra on health and fitness for her and her son. I'm somebody who worked out because I wanted to be fit. Yeah. Because yeah. I wanted to feel healthy. Yeah. Not because I wanted to look good and you know I wanted something to fit me well. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel The Tara Sharma Show and do keep writing in to our social media platforms and interacting with me. I'd love to hear your views on all this and more.